NVIDIA and Equinix. So this is an interesting one, right? So NVIDIA, as everybody knows, they have the DGX supercomputer infrastructure for supercomputing with an emphasis on AI. There was a, 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 a partnership that was announced this week between NVIDIA and Equinix, Equinix, depending on where you're from in the country, whereby um, Equinix, Equinix will host in, will actually deploy, host, and manage NVIDIA DGX infrastructure for NVIDIA customers. And it's interesting in, in a few ways, but before I get into why I think it's interesting, kind of the nuts and bolts of it, NVIDIA has its partner partner network, The I think it's called the NPN, the NVIDIA Partner Network. Those resellers are the point of contact for enterprise organizations looking to deploy AI or some other supercomputing workload, but don't have necessarily the space or the resources to manage. So they're the point of contact. They go in, they they proposition this, they, they're the, the front end. Customer agrees to it. Uh, Equinix engineers take the DGX infrastructure, deploy it within Equinix data centers, to, uh, host it, manage it, do everything for it, just provide uh, and kind of like a cloud, a managed service out to customers. Um, really interesting because it hits on a couple of things. One of the things I hear from enterprise folks is, you know, and one of the lags or one of the causes for lagging of, of AI deployment within the enterprise is a lack of resources, right? I don't have the people, IT staff and otherwise, to deploy, provision, and manage this, this really complex infrastructure on an ongoing basis. Uh, the other is space, right? Data centers are crowded today, um, so there's just not that space uh, and possibly the, the cooling infrastructure to, to, um, to make sure this infrastructure is well managed. So I love what they're doing. Um, I would really like, and I think this is going to make it easier for uh, large organizations to deploy and, and use DGX and, and the NV, uh, NVIDIA stack. What I would really like to see um, is some way of, of NVIDIA doing this with kind of down market, downstream customers that maybe yeah. don't have millions of dollars to invest, um, but are shy about using the public cloud because of data sovereignty, privacy, um, so on and so forth issues. So. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, sorry. hey, Matt, what's the interface in, what's the customer interface into uh, this, what's essentially infrastructure as a service? You mean programmatic or yeah. um, hey, like, you know, you go into AWS and you want to touch NVIDIA GPUs, you go through AWS console. Is it an Equinix console or is this a console that in that NVIDIA built themselves? What's it's the layer? Yeah, it's the NVIDIA software stack that's being deployed on DGX. Um, so the customer would access it just like they would any other server or set of servers on their network. Uh, that's what the connectivity is um, built to look like, right? You wouldn't know if it was in your data center or somebody else's. Um, yeah. So there, it, it's not like you go in, and it's a, it's a good question you ask because it's not, this is not like AWS where you would go into a cloud console, choose to select this service, um, and sign up for... For, for some duration, this is really your infrastructure that is sitting in Equinix and it's being managed yeah. by Equinix on your behalf. Got you, got you. Hey, one, uh, just just from a, a trend standpoint, you know, we've talked a lot about the different flavors of cloud and here we are in uh, 2024 and um, it's 15 years of the public cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, AWS brought in a queuing uh, service 15 years ago. And, you know, there's this uh, very strong sense that cloud can be anywhere. And the on-prem tools are getting better. The colo tools uh, are getting better. And I think this is a really good uh, example um, of that. And, you know, it spreads the wealth out to the companies that aren't yet prepared to Dumbo drop uh, petabytes of corporate information up into the public cloud. And quite frankly, um, colos are a, a good alternative if you want to unplug your data center, but you still want to have control. That's right. It's also a cost uh, saver. I mean, you just, you know, a, a very a quick number that I always pull out is you'll pay about 3x to go to the public cloud of what you can normally do for a steady state, well-run data center. And you'll probably pay 50% more if you go to a, a colo. But uh, 
uh, choice uh, is good uh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you know, Pat, I think this adds to the to what you're saying around the cloud and the maturation of the cloud. I think we're getting to the point where it's not even about cloud anymore. It's a data estate, right? Yeah. You have data that sits in multiple clouds. You have applications that run across multiple clouds on the edge, in your data center, on the colo. It's running everywhere, anywhere, at any time. And it's becoming truly stateless from a kind of where it sits, you know, where your data sits and where your applications sit. And to me, this is kind of that next step in that evolution. 